Welcome back to another episode of the College Football Hang. Welcome back to another episode of the College Football. Welcome back to another episode of the College Football Hangover. All right, now that there's not a weather. To- Motherfucker. So, welcome back to another episode of the College Football Hangover. Thank you again for coming back to your favorite college football recap show. Now, I will elaborate what that joke truly means here in a second, but if you watched any of the Cyhawk game or were at the game or any of that, you totally know <laughs> what I'm going for with that joke. But anyway, let's jump into it. We had an interesting week, and I only say this because there were actually some upsets going on. Uh, first off, we had Georgia Tech playing the Citadel, and if anybody knows who the Citadel is, it's the service team that's a part of our military that is an FCS school that almost always plays a team in the ACC, or really anybody, and they get stomped because that's just how it works. Except for this year, we have an exception. Four yards as time expired. That is no good. Outside the right pipe from King. 37 yards away. Jacob Godek to win it for the Bulldogs. We got it. The Citadel has defeated Georgia Tech. 27 to 24. That is unbelievable that the, the the Citadel manages to take down Georgia Tech. And it's truly amazing because this is the first time, I think, ever that not only the Citadel, but uh, Air Force had an upset. With Donald Hammond pitching it to Caden Remsburg, who scores on the first play of OT. Whoa. Another lightning strike from the academy. Get it here to OT. Montez looking that way. Throws incomplete. And Air Force holds off Colorado here in overtime. The Buffs can't find the magic to do it again. And I think all nine military-sponsored service football teams won a game this year. So... You know, hats off to the troops, man. Unbelievable. I don't think I've ever seen that in my life. I'm sure it probably happens, but if it hasn't happened while I'm alive, it doesn't matter. So, you know, salute to the troops. That's awesome. I love it when uh, the service teams do well. I've said that before, and I'll say it again. That's awesome. I, that's great. Um, another big storyline from Saturday, uh, not a lot of teams played anybody. I think Clemson was the only one that played in – legitimate F- FBS opponent in uh, Syracuse. I guess Alabama did play South Carolina, but they handed both handled both of those games. LSU had a bit of a struggle in the first quarter against Northwestern State. Well, they only scored the three points, but they ended up win- winning by scoring 65. So, again, I think a lot of these teams are just fine. Uh, the only other game of note that I want to talk about, of course, because I'm a narcissist, uh, the Cyhawk game. Unbelievable Cyhawk game. It was crazy. And I'll give actually like legitimate, full-blown analysis on the Loud Sports Podcast. As you know, this show is not for full, real analysis. This show is for jokes. Shout out to Dead Meat. I, I did... I had a joke on that YouTube channel that I like. I use that same joke. I don't want to be considered a joke thief. I'm just letting people know in case somebody wants to come after me. So the Cyhawk game, my first ever Cyhawk game going to that um, in Ames, College Ames Day. I talked about that last week. I was legitimately pretty excited about this game, mostly because, again, as you guys know, I'm number one, I'm a Husker. But I like to support the love of my life. And I really wanted to get involved in that rivalry because an in-state rivalry like that is so cool to be a part of. And it's something that Nebraska doesn't have. So to go to Iowa and see that kind of environment in the Cyhawk game is totally fun. Uh, It was a bit of an experience. So the abridged version, we got there about 9 o'clock. Crazy still. Uh, game day was going on. A lot of crazy stuff was happening. Um, we parked, like, it seems like a mile away from the stadium. So it really sucked after I had a few beers. Um, I had been tailgating, and I really had to pee. And it, uh, the, by the time I had gotten to the porta potty it was so bad that I couldn't 
walk, it seemed like. I don't know if you've ever had to pee so bad where you have a sharp pain. That's for dudes. I don't know if it's the same for ladies. Um, but the sharp pain in the tip of my, my doodad. And <laughs> I really needed to go. Then I was like slowly walking like I was an old man trying to get to the porta potty. Needless to say, I got there in time. I didn't pee myself. I had thought about it too. I thought because there's so much pressure on my bladder, I thought maybe if I just eke out a little bit, like a little bit down my leg, here and there, I'll be fine. I said that to her because complete stranger that I never met, I had mentioned that to her. She was cool. I held her purse and uh, we went about our days. I remember I slammed another drink, but I do remember at the tailgate we were at, there was a TV and I saw the single greatest unbelievable play of the weekend and it came in a game that I didn't expect it would. It was Mississippi State against Kansas State. You've probably seen it by now, but for those that haven't... Uh, here's Schrader buying time, extending the play. He's going to try and run for it. Leaps, gets spun around down to the 20-yard line. I just remember seeing that and the whole entire tailgate just going, oh! But you know what we really should have been thinking? Dude didn't even get the first down. What a loser. Dude didn't even get the first down. Hill State. Kansas State actually managed to win that game, so good on them. I did not expect that to happen. Kansas State uh, turning around. The state of Kansas, the Sunflower State, showing that they are a football state now, I guess, because because Kansas took Boston College to the woodshed, beat them 48-24, to and then Kansas State, of course, as I just mentioned, beat Mississippi State on the road. I think both teams won on the road, which, again, Good job, Sunflower State. So back to the Cyhawk game. Another thing that I wanted to talk about that I thought would be funny, of course, as you saw at the top of the show, this game had some weather delays and a lot of them. There were two big ones, and it was frustrating because this is – let me just explain how this played out for, for people at home that maybe had not seen it or heard about it. I'm sure you probably have. But so we get into the stadium. We saw in the forecast. Now, this is the most important thing in the forecast. It said that it would be a little bit of rain, and there was during our tailgate. There's going to be some rain from like 10 to 11, maybe to noon. There was. There was even more some raining when we were walking to the stadium. So, again, in my mind, I'm like, there'll probably be a little bit of rain. It'll go it'll go away, you know. As we were looking, you could see the clouds come in, and you could see that it it was going the other direction. The sun was coming through the clouds. It looked like it was going to be done. So we get in the tailgate. As we mentioned, I take a pee. We, we have some drinks. We talk with some people. Then we make our way to the stadium. So we get in the stadium. And again, I'm, I got to say, I need to stop drinking because my bladder just seemingly can't handle it. I had another stinging pain in my bladder. Maybe I should get my prostate checked. Oh, sh maybe I should get my prostate checked. Anyway, we get to the stadium. I go to the bathroom again. We get into our seats. There's a little bit of rain drizzling, which kind of sucks because if we had known ahead of time, we probably would have brought some ponchos or something. So the game kicks off. A little bit of rain. Not a big deal. Um, Iowa gets the ball. They drive down the field, kick a field goal. They go up 3 nothing, And then Iowa State returns the kick. And then lightning delay. Fine. Whatever. Safety and everything. Because I did kind of see a lightning strike. But then, you know, we get the sign that I mentioned where this, where it says every 30 minutes. So you have to wait 30 minutes after the most recent lightning strike. So I'm thinking, okay, we can probably handle this. Uh, so about an hour later, the game comes back. But in that meantime, before we come back to the game, I go down to the concessions because I'm thinking, hey, I got a bright idea. Nobody else in the stadium will be thinking this. We've got some time. I'll go get something to eat at the concession stand. Nobody had that idea. It took me about, I don't know, 30, 35 minutes to get a hot dog and a cheeseburger. And I want to be clear with this. I'm not upset at the concessions at Jack's Trice Stadium. I understand the scenario. They did not plan for a lightning delay and think that this any of this would happen. It's not on them. I'm just saying I was still annoyed because I really wanted a damn cheeseburger because I had been drinking a lot and I needed some food. I was hungry. I was hangry. Okay. I'm not. I needed a Snickers. That's what I should have got because I wasn't me when I'm. I'm not me when I'm angry. You know the whole. <laughs> ad campaign so while i'm getting that the play resumes and iowa state has a gadget play they throw a double pass boom touchdown cyclones up seven three i love it screw iowa did i say that out loud so let me come and as right as i get back into it i get back up this to my seat and maybe two plays later after i already got over my anger gave the Gave the food, gave uh, Ashley her hot dog. She wanted a corn dog. I got a hot dog. Didn't know that there was a freaking corn dog stand right behind me. 
Anyway, give her that. Game gets back. Oh, guess what? Two plays later, Dreadus Jake got to his seat and was getting ready to enjoy the football game. A weather delay! Because that's my life. Then that's when the huge storm comes in. They said that we were standing in our seats. We're like, we're not moving. It's just some rain. It, the lightning is way over on the other side of the stadium. We're going to be fine. It's not going to hit us. Probably not the smartest situation because we were on, we were sitting on metal benches. But, you know, we didn't want to move our spots. Not like the student section. Those people are insane. When the hail was coming in and they didn't even move, ah. So then they're like, oh, there's a hail in the area. So, no, we have to leave. We go back down and... I took some videos of this situation. That that was my day. And then, of course, as you saw, probably on uh, TV, the student section didn't move. And then they were running on the field and doing like slip and slide type stuff in the rain. And <laughs> it was so bad that the PA announcer was like, please get off the field for your safety. So... Yeah, th that was my experience with the Seahawks game. And then, you know, the game went on, and then Iowa State lost in the most Iowa State fashion. Yards as you can on this return. Jones and Milton standing back at their own 20. And he got hit as he tried to field it. You got to know where you are at all times on the, fo on the football field. Come on, man. You got to know where you're at. I understand you want to make a block and help your teammate, but you also need to know the guy's probably screaming at you, get out of the way, and he didn't. And, of course, Iowa State loses because of a stupid special team situation, which the luckiest man, it's got to be Kirk Ferentz. Who's, who Who would put himself in that situation? Third down, Iowa State has no timeouts. He throws the ball, and then he throws a play that causes the guy to go out of bounds, so he gifts... Iowa State a timeout and almost blew the game because of his terrible play calling. I mean, I don't understand that at all. At all. But they won because the football gods really hate me. So that's college football hangover this week. It was mostly just my <laughs> experience with the Seahawks because it really has wasn't that big of a week uh, football-wise because it was the final push to get rid of the, the cupcakes and then move into conference play for a lot of these teams. But that doesn't mean I can't give you the best of the week. So the best of this week, I got to give it up to Jalen Hurts. This dude, to me, has to be the top of anybody's Heisman list. Holy cow, he does it again against UCLA. Dominating performance. And I understand that it's UCLA and they're not the best defense, but Jalen Hurts has been doing this all week, all week, every week. And I'd like to see more what he's going to do, especially against the Big 12. And it's only going to get crazier with Lincoln Riley's offense. And the fact that they made the Rose Bowl just crimson in that game and just to see his performance, it's unbelievable. Every week, every time Oklahoma's on TV, I want to watch them because Jalen Hurts. Like, it's unbelievable. And it kind of, at first I was against it, but now I'm really into it. This is what the transfer portal can give us. And this is kind of the future of the sport. I'm kind of into it. And now I want to go and give you the hack of the week. Now, the hack of the week is someone special who's not even currently a college football player or a coach. He is a former college football player and now a current ESPN analyst for the SEC Network, I'm talking about Tim Tebow, because California had passed their bill for players now, so it's saying that they can get compensated for endorsements and using their name, which to me makes a lot of sense, because I think the NCAA has for too long capitalized off their players, and to me, it's it should not exist. In, in America, you should not have a company completely 100% profiting off their players without paying them or any sort of worker. That's what they are. They're an employee, and you should have to pay your employees. Now, if you don't want to go the full route of paying them fully like the NFL, I can understand that because it kind of defeats the purpose of having an amateur college level. Amateur college level. Fine, but I do think players should get paid for, for any sort of endorsements they get, and they shouldn't get in trouble for getting an agent while they're in school because they're getting ready for the, the NFL. They're getting ready for the next step, and I don't see any problem with that. But you have God's favorite spoiled rich Florida Gator, 
Tim Tebow sounding off on this. What, 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 it, um, what it was all about. I knew going to Florida, my dream school, where I wanted to go, the passion for it. And if I could support my team, support my college, support my university, that's what it's all about. But now we're changing it from us, from we, from my university, from being an alumni where I care, which makes college football and college sports special, to then, okay, it's not about us, it's not about we, it's just about me. And yes, I know we live in a selfish culture where it's all about us, but we're just adding and piling it onto that this is a guy coming from a situation that not a lot of players have come from he comes from a rich family who helped him out a lot versus most players that this is their only chance they get because they can come from a smaller poorer community and are trying to make money in the future in the nfl by by college football you see a lot of kids go to junior college to do this so Tim Tebow is not the guy that you go to. And this whole argument, because this is makes it different. This is for the love of the game and blah, blah, blah. Dude, these kids are getting brain damage. And you don't think they should get some money, dude? <sighs> Maybe if you cared this much about football, you'd still have a job in the NFL, Tim. Ugh. Hack of the week, Tim Tebow. Get him off my screen. So thank you so much for watching another episode of the College Football Hangover. I love this show. I hope you love this show. So thumbs up if you do. If you don't, I get it. You're probably Tim Tebow <laughs> in this scenario. But again, I don't apologize for that. Sorry. Not sorry. I'll be back next week to talk more college football. Hopefully next week we'll provide more than just Jake Williams story time. I'm thinking it will. Thank you so much. Oh, almost got through a whole episode without talking about the Huskers. They won 44-8. to eight. They looked great. That's all I need to say, baby. Go Big Red. Have a great day.